we were looking for anything that would improve bread wheat. Plant breeders have hit a brick wall in, in what um, material they can use to produce their novel varieties. So in order to bring in new versions of genes, we're looking at these goat grasses. It's quite a large scale project that we're undertaking here. There's around about 250 goat grasses and we're crossing to two UK varieties. So the scale of the project soon increases and the object is to bring in novel genes using conventional plant breeding methods. Breeders don't tend to concentrate on this pre-breeding aspect because it, it, there's, there's no guarantee that they'll find anything interesting. Um, and obviously they're commercial breeders, they need to make money and it's, it's too much of a risk for them. They might be backing a wrong horse. <laughs> so these, the, the, these goat grasses here were all sourced from different regions and we're hoping that there's quite a lot of genetic variability. When this happened in nature, um, naturally about 10,000 odd years ago, it would have only happened so infrequently. There's a very limited amount of genetic diversity in bread wheat. So we're recreating what happened in nature 10,000 years ago, but trying to use different progenitor species. And what we're expecting to see is different kinds of genes in, these, in the goat grass that we see here. Um, they could have good effects, they could have bad effects. This is um, conventional crossing. Um, and what I mean by that is that we remove the anthers, which is, is the male part of the plant, which produces the pollen. Um, once we remove the anthers, we um, get the donor plant and we sprinkle the pollen from the donor plant onto the um, stigma, which is the female um, organ of the, of the plant. And that's known as conventional crossing. Um, whereas GM technology, you specifically um, excise a gene from a genome and you incorporate that gene into a plant that you, you want to genetically modify. Whereas this is much wider, it's how things happen naturally. You couldn't just leave the plants in the glass house and let nature get on with it because of the, the, it's quite an important tissue culture step that happened naturally 10,000 years ago but we don't quite know how so we have to intervene. The, the seed that initially develops in this cross um, is infertile uh, so to make it fertile we have to um, remove the seed and place it in a chemical that will uh, double the amount of chromosomes in that seed and that will enable it to produce its own offspring itself. We test it by evaluating the material out in the field. Um, so once the plants have got to the right stage, we have a, a plant breeder that will go out into the field looking at the individual plots um, and he'll assess them and he'll pick out plants that he thinks are worth evaluating for the future. Bigger, stronger, disease resistance, high yielding, anything that looks like it could potentially improve on wheat varieties that we already have. Well, the point of this is to increase genetic diversity in bread wheat. That's the whole purpose of this project. Ultimately, we want to increase yield. We've got there's potentially more people to feed, um, less land to grow crops on. Um, so we need to think of um, ways of improving the crop varieties we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. And one way of improving them is to bring in novel sources of genetic diversity. Um, and also from a UK perspective, if there is, if we're going to see climate change, um, we might see pests and pathogens that we don't normally see here. So we might need to adapt our wheat to tackle those problems.